In an increasingly tech-savvy world that depends heavily on electronic goods, almost everything from your smartphones to your cars depends on a suit of 17 elements called the rare earth metals. These are strategic assets used in manufacturing semiconductors, batteries and defense systems. Production of fighter jets, hypersonic missiles, electric cars, satellites, smartphones, lasers and radiation-hardened electronics is heavily dependent on rare earth. However, rare earth metals are now becoming a subject of geopolitical competition. When the Taliban took over Afghanistan, it did not only take control of a country, but also the treasure troves of rare earth metals worth anywhere between $1 trillion and $3 trillion spread all over Afghanistan. And now, China is also trying to loot Afghanistan's rare earth wealth. With bullies taking control of the global rare earth supply chain, all major powers must find and secure sufficient supplies of rare earth metals for their purposes and this is exactly what India is also doing. Hi and welcome, you are watching TFI English, the national socio-political analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I am your host Tribhuvan and in this video I will tell you about India's treasure trove of rare earth metals and Modi government doesn't want to miss out on it. Before you start watching this video, you must have seen me wear these amazing t-shirts with Sanskrit quotes and Indian heroes. The great news is that you can get them too. Just visit tfistore.com and pick your favorite from a bunch of options. India is an ambitious powerhouse that aspires to become a world leader in technologies like advanced ballistic systems, industrial machinery, semiconductors, IT, electrical vehicles, and clean energy systems. However, such technological advancement demands reliance on rare earth metals which have important applications in all kind of modern technologies. Yet, India still imports most of its rare earth needs in finish from its geopolitical rival China which controls 70% of the global production in rare earth metals. India is estimated to have the world's fifth largest reserve of rare earth elements nearly twice as much as Australia. However, the country has failed to tap into those resources due to tight regulations and excessive government control. However, this is bound to change as India opens up to beach sand mineral mining. Significant rare earth minerals found in India include eliminite, selimanite, garnet, zircon, monazite and rutile which are collectively called beach sand minerals, also called as BSM. India has almost 35% of world's total BSM deposits. If India taps into its BSM deposits, it can grab a healthy share in the global rare earth supply chains. A government organization named Indian Rare Earths Limited, also called IREL, currently has a monopoly over monetized beach sand, the primary mineral that contains rare earth metals. Monazite beach sand is found in India's coastal states and is a gold mine of sorts given all the industrial use of rare earth metals in sectors like smartphones, missiles and electric vehicles. However, presently IREL simply produces rare earth oxides and sells them to foreign firms which supply the finished products and harvest huge profits. Moreover, the only other purpose of IREL is to supply thorium which is extracted from monazite to the Department of Atomic Energy. Thus, IREL or the work it undertakes has little to no significance in the global market or the domestic consumption market. The Ministry of Mines and the Directorate General of Foreign Trade too had restricted private sector's involvement and allowed export of BEM only through state-owned canalizing agents. This means that even if there was a private player in the tightly regulated sector, it would not be able to add any value to India's rare earth export sector. The Modi government understands that beach sand mines are treasure troves and tapping into them is the key to controlling a significant share in the global rare earth supply chains. Therefore, the latest action plan prepared by the center proposes opening up two restricted sectors, beach sand minerals and offshore mining, for exploration activity by private players. The Modi government is reversing a series of actions taken over the last five years to cut down the role of private sector in other to avoid illegal mining. Indian Express had earlier reported that the centre prepared a 60-point action plan following a meeting of Prime Minister Modi with the secretaries of all departments and ministries. The action plan stated two sectors are currently restricted, beach sand minerals and offshore mining. A high-level committee may be set up for opening up these two sectors for exploration and production by private sector. The Modi government is introducing some milestone reforms in beach sand mining which reverses its earlier policy decision in this sector. Moreover, beach sand mining was progressively restricted since 2015 by the NDA government. 
Earlier, private players involved in beach sand mining were required to get a license from the AERB, also known as Atomic Energy Regulatory Board. As a part of the licensing conditions, the miners were supposed to separate the beach sand minerals and dispose of the tailing containing monazite in the company premises or as backfill. In 2015, the activities of the private players in beach sand minings were reduced drastically as licenses were not renewed by the AERB under the Atomic Energy Radiation Protection Rules 2004 over radiological safety concerns. A July 2021 Department of Atomic Energy, also called as DAE, on restricting illegal mining, categorically acknowledged that sand beach mining by private enterprises has been terminated as a part of border effect to curb illegal mining. With the global earth geopolitics heating up, the present circumstances incentivize cashing in on the rare earth metal reserves. The Modi government realizes this and this is why it is opening up beach sand mining to private players despite its earlier reluctance. India's rich BSN deposits are an economic goldmine and the Modi government doesn't want to miss out on the opportunity of capitalizing on it.